Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. Welcome. Yeah. We are thrilled to be able to share this time with you and to feast on the Word together. Because yes. why? We're all hungry. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Right. We're hungry for what God has for yeah. us today. So thank you for joining us. We invite you to get your Bible, follow along with us. And we've been taking several episodes now. We're teaching on faith. And so we want you to go back and watch previous episodes that are part of this series that we've been doing yes. because we've just said so many things we can't capture it all again That's in each right. episode. So we invite you to go back. We've been looking at something because uh, Abraham is our father in the faith. Yes. And so we want to look what did his faith do. Yeah. And uh, if we'll do what he did, then our faith will be as operative as his was. Yeah. And so in Romans chapter 4, verse 17, we're just going to read a portion of this passage. But Romans 4, verse 17, God is talking about what he said to Abraham. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. So what do we see about that? the Bible kind of faith is that it calls things that be not as yes. though Amen. they were. Amen. Meaning we're not calling it as it is. Right. Yeah. We're calling it as God says right. it's to be. Amen. So if there's pain in, we're in the body, we're not saying I have pain in my body. Yeah. We're, call we're saying, I believe I'm healed. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And you say, well, I I'm not healed. So that's lying. No, when you say, I believe, you're not lying. Right. That's yeah. right. You're that's saying right. what you believe. Yes. Yes. And so you say, I believe I, I receive my healing. Mm -hmm. And so faith, is, faith has a call to it. Mm -hmm. This is what we've been addressing in previous episodes. That's why we want you to go back and watch them. But it says, faith calls those things which be not as though they were. Taking that as our jumping off point today, uh, we want to go further and restate what we had said in a previous episode, and that is something that Oral Roberts would state. He would say, every day, miracles are coming to you or going past you. Yes. Well, this is a man who walked with God for over 70 years. Yeah. So he knew what he was talking about when it comes to the power of yes. God. Yes. Um, when he says every day miracles are coming to you or going past you, we have to ask ourselves, how can we keep that power from passing us? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. What do we need to do mm -hmm. um, to make sure that that power stops at our need? Uh -huh. yes. Well, we went over and we started it in the previous episode, but I want us to continue today at Mark chapter 10. So get your Bibles and follow along with us, if you would. Mark chapter 10 is going to show us how to keep power from passing us by, how to keep miracles from passing us by, healings from passing us by, because these belong to us. And the power to fulfill them is in us. Why? Because the greater one is in us. But also we have to realize that power moves. How do we keep it moving toward us? in our situation, not passing us. Mark chapter 10, verse 46, it reads, And they came to Jericho, and as Jesus went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside, highway side, begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Notice this. It says he began to cry out. 
when they told him to be quiet, he yeah. kept crying out. Yes. What's he doing? It's what Abraham did. He called. Yes. Yes. Faith calls. Faith doesn't go silent when it's faced with a need. Amen. Amen. If we go silent in the face of a need, yeah. we will more than likely do without the supply that belongs to us. And so blind Bartimaeus called and he kept calling even though those around him told him, you're bothering us. <laughs> you're, you're too loud. And it says, what did he do? He amped it up. He just went louder. And it says in verse 49, and Jesus stood still. Now, I, I like that so much. Jesus stood still. If we take um, the statement that Earl Roberts made, Everyday miracles are coming to you or going past you, but we want them to stand still. Yeah. How do we get that from passing us by and that power stands still with us? Calling. 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 Yes. That is what keeps what belongs to you in Christ to keep from passing you by. Amen. You call. Amen. Amen. Jesus was on his divine course that day and blind Bartimaeus was not his goal. Right. He was not, we don't have any record that Jesus left Jericho because he had blind Bartimaeus in mind. Right. Um, it's just that as Jesus was on his course that day, he heard something that stopped him. Yeah. Yeah. God hears faith yes. and the power of God meets faith. Yes. Power will arrive and power will manifest when faith is heard. Yes. Amen. Yes. So we see something when it said, and Jesus stood still at Jairus' call, we see what Jesus will not pass by. Right. He will not pass by someone who is giving the call of faith. Right. He won't pass you by, period. Yes. He won't pass you by. And it's not just faith that stopped Jesus. Mm -hmm. As we said in the previous episode, it's not just saying, I have faith. That won't stop power from passing you by. Uh, what stops him is faith that's released. Yes. Faith comes by hearing, but faith is not released by hearing. Faith has to be released on purpose. And calling is one of the primary ways we release our faith by saying something. Then also we can release our faith by what we do, an act of faith. So if we're not calling, our faith can't be heard. And it, won't, it is though we don't have faith if That's it goes right. silent. Right. Right. It won't benefit us yes. just to have it. Yes. We have to release it. Yes. We have to spend it. Amen. We have to get it in motion. Right. Calling is what makes our faith heard. It's how you, when you open your mouth and you, you hook your tongue to your spirit, uh -huh. not just yeah. your mind, but yeah. to your spirit, yeah. there's faith in your heart. Yeah. There's yeah. faith in yes. your spirit. Yes. Yes. And when you hook your tongue to your spirit, you can call out uh -huh. and that faith yes. that's in there comes out and it's heard. And yeah. someone uh, who recognizes spiritual things, they'll recognize that sound. Yeah. Yeah. Faith has a, a particular sound to it. Amen. And so his call carried his faith with it. Amen. And Jesus stopped for that faith. Amen. Amen. So we have to make sure it's not just saying I have faith right. or I want to get faith. It's released faith. Yes. Released faith. Yes. Say that with me. Released yes. faith yes. is what receives from God. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Notice that he's the one, blind Bartimaeus is the one who initiated this miracle, not Jesus. Um, blind Bartimaeus didn't just stand there and say, well, if God wants me healed, he'll heal me. Uh -huh. And so many people get this idea. If God wants me healed, he'll heal me. If God wants to meet my need, he'll meet my need. No, he does what your faith gives him permission to do. You have to call and your faith calling is his permission. And so uh, Jesus is not the one who initiated this miracle. Blind Bartimaeus did. Now I want us to go on and keep reading in verse 49. So look at verse 49 and it says, And they call the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth you. So the same ones that were telling him to be quiet are now congratulating him. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. In verse 50, And he, blind Bartimaeus, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. 
Um, the reason this part is so significant, why did Mark record that? Mm -hmm. What does it matter whether he took his coat off or not or he's still wearing it? Mm -hmm. Because this was not just an ordinary coat. It was a mm -hmm. government-issued coat mm -hmm. that was only issued to those who had legitimate needs for begging. You couldn't just decide one morning, I'm going to go out and beg on the street. They wouldn't let you. You had to have a legitimate need. You couldn't be pilfering off society. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Wow. And so you had to be granted by the government some kind of token to show that you had a legitimate need for support from the public. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so they would issue this coat. When he took off this coat, he was saying, I'll never be a beggar again. I don't know who would have picked up that coat because it's a license to beg. But you don't want to pick that up. <laughs> and so he was basically saying that day, before, he, before Jesus ever ministered to him, we heard his call of faith, but we see his act of faith by taking off what he had been relying on as his source of income. He's saying, I'm not going to need this anymore. Jesus has stopped for me. Amen. So blind Bartimaeus not only spoke faith, he acted faith. And he came to Jesus. Verse 51, and Jesus answered and said unto him, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Now, people would listen to that and say, well, if he's a son of God, why does he have to, have to, have to ask a blind man, what do you need? <laughs> because really, most, most everyone I've ever seen that's blind, it's, it's e easily, easy to distinguish yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Jesus would have seen that. Mm -hmm. And you'd say, well, why? It's, if it's so obvious what he needs, why did he ask him that question? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people don't have their faith on what is an obvious need oh, in their life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's good. Just because it's obvious to us doesn't mean that's what they have their faith for. Right. They might have their faith on something else. Yeah. Maybe he would have had his faith on, uh, I, need, I, need a, I need a financial miracle. Right. Yeah. 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 See, Jesus is going to find out what did you stop me for? Mm -hmm. right. Right. What do you need? So sometimes that's why you'll see many ministers, they'll ask. When somebody may walk up with a, a, a cast on their leg or their arm in a cast and the, and the minister may say, what do you need? Mm -hmm. It's not because they're ignorant. It's not because that they, they don't see the obvious. It's because we've got to locate what do you have your faith on. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's what Jesus was doing. He was locating him. What do you have your faith on? Uh -huh. yes. I love what the Amplified Classic says in verse 51. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? Yes. My, my, my. Yeah. You know what that sounds like to me? A divine blank check. Yes. That's what that sounds like to me. What do you want me to do for you? He's letting Bartimaeus fill in the blank. Oh, wow. He didn't tell, he didn't limit blind Bartimaeus that day. He didn't say, okay, I'll only heal your eyes. He didn't say that. He did, he did not put any limits on that. What do you want me to do for you? Can I say this? God always asks us that. What do you want me to do for you? Why? He wants to do for us. He wants to do for us. He wants to heal. He wants to provide. He wants to deliver. He wants to give direction and clarity. Notice Jesus is really putting himself as a servant to blind Bartimaeus' faith. Your faith Blind Bartimaeus' faith turned Jesus into his servant that day. Oh, wow. What wow. do you want me to do for you? Oh, wow. Jesus was a servant. Yes. Yes. He said, I didn't come to be served, I came right. to serve. Right? Yes. Yes. right? Yes. Um, I have a staff here at the ministry. I can call a staff member into the office and I can say, such and such, come in here. And they'll come in, they'll say, what would you like me to do for you? That means mm -hmm. I'm here to fulfill what you request. Yes. That's exactly what Jesus said to this blind man. Mm -hmm. I'm here to fulfill what you request. Wow. What do you want me to do for you? 
you know he asks you the same thing. Yes. Yes. Don't leave him standing there without an assignment. Oh. Assign him with your faith. Yes. Amen. What do you need him to do for you? Call him that to you. Yes. Amen. Amen. How did blind Bartimaeus get this divine blank check? He called for it. He called for it. He called for it. Then we go on and we keep reading and it says in verse 51, this is the King James, and, and the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. He didn't say I made you whole. Right. Right. Yeah. Now we know Jesus had a part in it, sure. but he's saying this, your faith made you whole. In other words, your faith started this, not me. Right. Your faith started this. He said, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight. Now notice this. Jesus said, go thy way before he saw anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. He yeah. said, go your way. Uh -huh. Jesus ministered sight to him by faith. Yeah. He said, go your way while he was still blind. He said that, go <laughs> your right. way. Yes. Right? He said, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately after Jesus said that, oh, yeah. then his sight came. Yeah. Yeah. So blind Bartimaeus was in faith and Jesus was in faith. And I so appreciate the next phrase. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Yes. What's that mean? He lived his life uh, following Jesus' teachings, his command. He didn't just pick up and go live any old way. It matters where you go after you're healed. It matters how you live after you receive your healing. It matters after you receive something from God, how you handle your life. Because many times people will receive something from God then go back to living a carnal, thoughtless life. Yeah. It's not that God takes anything from them, but there's a thief out there. there sure Satan is. comes to yeah. steal, yeah. kill, and destroy. And he is constantly looking for the opportunity to steal from you everything God has blessed you with. Right. The way to hold fast and maintain everything God's blessed you with is where you go after he blesses you. Amen. Who do you hang out with after he blesses you. What locations do you go to after he blesses you? Amen. It matters. It's not by mistake that Mark recorded that immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. He went the way of the rest of the crowd who was hungry to be around Jesus. Amen. So I say this, what's in your call? Your healing your provision, uh -huh. your answers, the wisdom you need. It all resides within your call. But if you don't call, it's got no way of being heard. That's right. That's right. Amen. Your miracle is in your calling. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. Yeah. The more we call it, the more we have it. That's right. The less we call it, the less we have it. Our life is a picture of what we're calling. That's right. Amen. Or I could say it this way. Our life is a picture of what we're not calling. Oh, that's yeah. it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Amen. that our life is a reflection mm -hmm. of what we're, what we're expecting yes. Yes. and what we're releasing our faith for. Yes. Amen. We can look at our life and know what we've been calling and know what we haven't been calling. That's true. It's not just about not saying the wrong thing, mm -hmm. but it is about saying the right, right. thing. Yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 We can look at our life and know what we need to call. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Look at your life yeah. and yeah. say, what's lacking? Yeah. I know what I need to start yeah. calling. Right. In any arena, yeah. right. whether it's spiritual, whether it's mental, whether it's physical, whether it's financial, whether it's material, whatever. Yeah. Look at your life. If it's not a fullness of God in that arena, mm -hmm. calling plays a part in moving into that fullness. Amen. Amen. It plays a part. It's not the whole of it, 
Because you do have to have faith. You do have to have faith to come. You do have to feed your faith. You do have to, you do have to renew your mind. Because you can call and call and call, but if you never renew your mind to have right thinking, your faith is hindered. Because faith also had, thinks right. You know. Amen. Uh, why did Jesus? Why did Jesus stop for a call? Because Jesus is the is the high priest of our profession or yes. our confession, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and He was already showing that on the earth. Yes. Yeah. When He throughout His earthly ministry, He is the high priest, but He was also showing that what you confess mm-hmm. directs me. Right. Yeah. 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 But the the word calls Him in Hebrews. He is the high priest of our profession or our confession. So he's saying this, what you say is what I'll see to it is fulfilled. That's the high priest position. He sees to it that the terms of the covenant are fulfilled when we profess those terms. When we confess those terms. As the high priest, he sees to it that those terms of that covenant are met because he's the high priest of that. Amen. Amen. As the high priest, he's the high priest of our profession. He's listening for what we're saying. When we call, he's listening for that because he is the high priest of our confession or our profession. It's saying the same thing. Amen. 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 Jesus is not the high priest. It does not call him the high priest of our faith. Right. Mm -hmm. That's That's good. You understand that? It does not call him the high priest of our faith. In Hebrews, he's called the high priest of our profession. What is that? It's our released faith. He's the author of our faith, but he's the high priest of what our faith says. It's key. It's key. It's critical that we understand that because people will say, well, if I can just hear more teaching on faith, that's good. That's good to feed your faith. That's good. Faith comes. But if faith is never acted upon, faith is not reaching its highest expression. Faith has to be released for it to benefit our lives. Amen. So, Jesus, and, and it's so critical we understand Jesus is not the high priest of our faith. He's the author of it. Yes. He's the author and the finisher of our faith, but he's the high priest of our confession or our profession. Amen. Some think that they need more faith when they really need more calling. They really just need more calling. Just call. Just call. Um, I love something that Brother Norval Hayes said. Now, Many of you would have, these, these audience members here, we know Brother Norville because he was at our church the last four to five years of his yes. life. He was with us every year. Um, but he's been a friend of this ministry since, I, I want to say, the early 70s. Wow. And uh, I met him in the early 80s. And he, a dear, precious man, taught faith, taught healing, yeah. taught the worship of God. And I mean, he was, uh, he, he had a bold faith. Yeah. And... Um, he had a way of saying things so simply, <laughs> but it would nail your hide to the wall yes. in the good way, uh, in the good way, not the bad way. <laughs> and uh, he made this statement where it says in Hebrews that Jesus is the high priest of our profession or our confession. He says, when we ask God for something, God will turn to Jesus, who is the high priest of our profession and say, how many times have they professed it? Wow. 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 Yeah. That's so true. Uh -uh. Wow. Yes. If Jesus is listening for what we're saying, he knows what we're saying or not saying. Right. And God, God hears us say, oh God, would you do this? And he says, how many times have they confessed it? How many times have they called it? How many times have they release their faith for it, you see. Because he knows, the high priest knows. Because he's the high priest of our profession, of our confession. Interesting, interesting to think of because he is the high priest and I guarantee you, he is excellent as high priest. Amen. Amen. Give him something to be the high priest of in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I want to minister to those of you today. Um, we're going to keep going this direction. So keep watching upcoming episodes because there's more to say. Yes. We're going to go back and we're going to look more at Abraham's faith because he is our example of yes. faith. Yes. Um, and there's much more to see. Go back and watch previous episodes, but you don't want to miss upcoming episodes. Right. But before we go off the air today, I want to pray with you. Yes. How about we take the opportunity to call yes. As together? Let's call yes. some things together. Yes. You call along with us. Yes. There's faith in you. If yes. you're born again, there is faith yes. in you. Release that faith. Yes. And we're going to call and right where you're at, open your mouth yes. and you call and let your heart agree with yes. these yes. words. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so you just reach your hands up in worship to God along with us and just declare it after us. Say, Father, Father we thank you we thank for your word. For your word. We, thank you we thank you for all that's been provided for me in Christ. I receive it. I take it. And because it's mine, I call my body healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I call all the finances that I need to come. I call the blessing of God is moving in my family. It's moving on my children. Children. On my children. I thank you, I thank you that, my that my business is blessed, is blessed. that everything I set my hand to, set my hand to it's, blessed it's blessed in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I call every need of my life, I call it met by your miracle power. And I receive it, and I receive right, it. Now. Right, now. right now, right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus your power is moving, working in my behalf. And every day, I call it mine. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're so glad that you've joined us today. And the reason we're here today is because of the generosity of Kenneth Copeland Ministries and his partners. Brother Copeland has made the decision that all the programmers on the Victory Channel, that all this airtime is sowed to us. And what a seed. Whoa. We ask that if you're not already, pray about becoming a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. You can go to their website at kcm.org and you can sign up today to become a partner. And it will keep programs like this keep coming into your home and other homes. Amen. Amen. And remember until next time, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. It is possible to live untroubled and undisturbed even in the presence of the enemy. In this book, by Nancy Dufresne, Peace, Living Free from Worry, she teaches how to close the door to worry, fear, and doubt. Order now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, and I'm the president of World Harvest Bible Training Center in Murrieta, California. One of the things that Dad Hagen would often say to us is every generation must be evangelized and taught and that preparation time is never lost time. We're so grateful for the opportunity to help train the next generation. One of the things that God is doing in this era is He's training us in the Word and the Spirit. And so we are training the students in that format. It's not simply an academic approach but a spirit-led format. Romans chapter 1, verse 11, Paul said, For I long to see you, 
that I may impart some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. This Bible school is a catching school. You're going to receive impartations that come through teaching, through the laying on of hands, and through fellowship with those who are hungry and moving with the Word and the Spirit. The difference is the spirit of faith here. Yes. Uh, yes. It's not just the book learning, but this right here is about the spirit of faith and learning yes. the life in that spirit of faith. Yes. After coming to the Bible school and looking back on the time that I've had here, I really see how God orchestrated things and brought me into a place where I could get the impartations that I was going to need uh, in order to move forward in my life. And even to this day, being out of Bible school now for uh, you know eight years almost, it's it's crazy to see all the things that are still working in my life through Bible school and uh, through the relationships that I build here. Um, just because you have a family, just because you have. Uh, you know, things that are going on in your life already or things that maybe you're already doing. If you feel uh, any form of a lead to come to the Bible school, put the application in, make the first steps. You know, follow the peace in your heart. And if you have peace about coming, everything will come together. You just keep making the steps. You know, one of the things that I loved about the Bible school is we have so many guest ministers and so many different perspectives that come into play. And you get to learn um, all the different things that help make them successful. And you also get to learn what to watch out for. Before I joined Bible school, I was very career oriented. I was very education oriented, which are good things. However, it engrossed my life to a point where I lost direction towards what God had in store for me. But because I went to World Harvest Bible Training Center, it brought me back to a grounded, established, um, anchored place in God's Word. And because of that, I was able to move towards what God has for me. And what God had for me was more than what I could even imagine for myself, more than what the success that I thought the world can bring me. I think for me, uh, the whole picture of Bible school is learning how to look to God and how He takes care of you because you're in His plan. It's never too late. Yeah, yes. You're never too old. <laughs> I encourage anybody that um, you're even thinking about coming to the school. If you're thinking about Bible school, don't think anymore. Just go ahead and fill out your application and submit it. You're not going to regret it. You're going to build relationships that last you a lifetime. The Catherine I was before Bible school is a completely different person than who I am now. So we invite you, pray about becoming part of World Harvest Bible Training Center, a place where you will receive impartations, demonstrations, and revelations. God bless you.